Two big jobs happening today at uh, ProCamp Solutions. We're fitting the bull bar. And in the background, this is one of the Autograph Overland troop carriers that is having its roof conversion done. A few weeks ago, I unboxed these. These are PVS's black LED headlights to suit the Land Cruiser 70 series. Unlike HID headlamps, these require no ballast and everything is nicely fitted into a housing that is the same shape and size as the original equipment. I am hoping though that its performance will be considerably better. But it certainly looks good. It's plug and play, no challenge with the wiring at all. Really nicely made, they do look good and I think they're going to offset the bull bar that I'm about to fit. Some may ask, why did you stray from the traditional, no longer ARB? Well, to be honest, the main reason is, I wanted a new look, I wanted a new story. I need to tell you now that this was donated. But before I approached them, I did a lot of research and I had a look at a lot of bars. And I wanted one that had great reviews and looked good, but was lighter. How much lighter? Well, there is no data on the ARB website on how heavy their deluxe bar is the bar I had on the Dream Tour and my previous troop carrier, but it's estimated between 75 and 80 kilograms. This one is a little lighter, okay? That weighs 54 kilos. It is of course made by Off-Road Animal. They have two bars that fit the 70 series. The first one is, uh, this one here is called the Toro Bar, and they also have the, what's the bar called, the other one? Predator Bar which is similar to the bottom here, with a much simpler uh, bar work here. And I'm thinking, no, I must protect my lights. Therefore, a full width, full height bar. Now you might think that weight, well, if you're gonna spend weight, putting it on a bull bar is not a bad place to put it because weight probably means strength but there is a happy place. To my mind, aluminium is, has gone too far in the weight saving loss of strength. And this, I think, is a fantastic compromise. It looks good. And well, just look at it. And this is an ARB bar that I had on both my other 70 series in Australia. Um, I love it, it's a fantastic bar, it looks, it looks really, really good. In terms of price, um, the off-road animal appears on the website as more expensive than many high quality bars. But actually, if you look closely, their price includes the um, recovery points and the plate protecting the steering bars. So actually, if it's more, it's not by much. I love the fact that it's such a low profile. It's, it it uh, sticks out forward um, quite a lot less than traditional bars, if I can call them that. Let's see how I can see the bar from inside. Um, I cannot see the front of it. I can see just the wings, that's all. Nothing else. Really good approach angle on this wheel. Uh, the angle there is, and one of the great parts about this is I do have a winch but I'm not going to fit it yet because I've still got to decide what I'm going to do with lights and things. And with this bull bar, you can fit the winch after the bull bar is fitted to the car, which is a big thing. I love the attention to detail. I really do. And because it's, 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 almost, it's almost modular, and then you can decide whether you want to fit these parts or not. Um, I still want to work out exactly what I'm going to do with the lighting. You can fit a, 
um, a light bar in here. Off-road Animal actually did supply me with a light bar, but I'm thinking about trying something else. Um, and you have these orifices here and here. Um, and I'm thinking that I will make better use of them than putting in a light, because honestly, I'm having the, the hella lights here, a light bar there, and the daylights. Where am I going to put my daylights? I'm not sure, but I don't need more lights there. That would be, that would be overdoing it. And I'm also not sure what I'm going to do with the bash plate. It's supplied in grey, but I'm thinking about making it the same colour as the wrap. But before I go any further, time to take stock. OK, uh, weighing it again. When it was brand new with full tanks of fuel, it weighed 2,460 kilograms. Today, it's sitting at 2,566. So that's 1276 on the rear and 1290 on the front. Quite a bit extra on the front. So what have I done? The off-road animal bull bar. PVS headlight upgrade. Recaro seats, audio insulation, the catch can, the fuel filter upgrade, speakers and amplifier, a head unit upgrade, armrests and door pods, quite a bit of wiring, the true tracker axle correction, spotlights and daylights, and a center console fridge. How much extra have I added? so far 110 kilograms extra weight an extra 56 on the front and 54 on the back surprising really considering almost all the work i did was on the front of the troopy and i'm about to add some more with the fitting of the winch and here are your guesses i've taken the first 150 and right up top two people actually got it right uh, then after that, a lot of people close and a lot of people way, way off. Most of those people that are way off, far too heavy. They think, they're they thinking that I'm adding weight quicker than I actually am. Which, which makes me think, if you think that weight is being added on faster than it really is, means that you are overestimating weight. But that's not the trend in the four-wheel drive industry. The trend is underestimating weight. It's basically saying, oh, I can do all of this thing and well, it'll only be 150 kilograms and meanwhile it's 400 kilograms. And that's not uncommon. So why then is the average guess double what I actually added? I don't know. But though in a strange way, the higher guess Somehow it was not strange to me. I, I, I thought it was a little less than it actually is. I, I thought it would be about 80. That was my kind of mental mm, mm, 80. So I was under. I have a question. Yep. Is it possible to hide the control box under there somewhere? It's not the prettiest thing in the world. No. And the bar is. <laughs> and the cables coming out of it does put up a bit of a Mardi Gras vibe. Um, I wasn't thinking that, but you are absolutely right. So the, the idea is not to have it here, but mm. to have it somewhere accessible. Possible? Not possible. There's, look, there's a ton of space still left there. I think it's a Mr. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want to ask him? This could get very interesting. I was going to ask him, I don't think so, no. <laughs> I'll just be over here. <laughs> what we have to? What can you see from the front at the moment? You're right on the edge of this bracket that's running up here. This brace. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm in between the two braces. but. So in order to make it work, hiding this in the winch, I need to run an extension to the plug and so I bought myself some uh, multi-core cable that should do the trick nicely and I will now extend it some of you will probably thinking right now well it comes with a remote switch why do you need even you need that well I think remote 
winch switching is a very bad idea. It's very unsafe because the person controlling the winch is the person controlling the recovery operation. And that person needs to be fully involved, making all the decisions, specifically making the decision when to winch in or winch out. And you do that by being part of it, not sitting in the cab, not your mate standing on the other side or talking to his mates while holding this, this piece of deadly equipment. Imagine somebody working on the winch and maybe tying on a safety strap or doing something and that person inadvertently winds the winch in and slices somebody's fingers. It's happened, but now with a remote switch, it's even more likely to happen. In my book, if you're doing a recovery, one person has control of the winch and that person only. End of story. That person looks after and governs and controls the winch. And, it, and it's standing there with a the cable, right there. Ah, Rick. oh, no, 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 no. Very bad idea. I would have it, I'll keep it in my car as a backup to this. This will be the way I will control my winch. Right, this should be quite an easy job to do. Soldering iron, some solder. So I've joined that cable up, I've cable tied it down so it can't move. Now I have to do something about this box. This big hole in there will allow water and mud in. Not that this box is particularly watertight, but I just want to stop excess mud uh, and dust getting in there. So I'm going to put one of these uh, connectors on to, uh, to blank up this hole here. So there, I finished it. I've um, run a cable out the front of it, um, kind of sealed that up reasonably well. It's not a waterproof casing, but it'll reduce the amount of dust uh, and mud that enters the box. And I'll leave that as it is now. I won't put the shrink wrap on it until we finally fix it to the grill, which that is the front of the grill on the uh, Land Cruiser. And um, I will probably put it through something like that. Details of that I'm going to wait until the, we actually install it in the vehicle. So I have made this and that gets attached like that and there and on top of that, that goes on top like that. And there it is. And that's upside down, but I put it like that for a reason. Supplied with it is this cleverly designed number plate bracket because it'll stay up there when I use the winch, pull that up and normally it's down there. So those little attention to detail, love it. Thank you so much for watching. These videos are made possible by contributions from Patreons. Join our Patreon family now.